Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. I want to start off this video by saying my S3 storage absolutely sucks, and I am so sorry about it. Um, this video is going to be discussing why my S3 storage sucked from my data center company I'm working on and what I did to fix it. So let's get started. So over the past few weeks, I've received tons of support tickets from users saying the S3 storage is slow, they can't access their data, um, all that kind of stuff. And I've even had some users cancel their service because of that, which is a huge problem. My storage should not be causing turnover rates. It's really embarrassing and I knew I had to do something about it. Before I explain what I had to do, uh, let's take a look at how we actually ran the old S3 server and the configuration of that and why it was doomed for failure from the start. It's actually really weird to say out loud, but my old S3 server is actually running the exact same hardware as the new server, um, just in a completely different configuration. So the S3 storage server is using a software called Minio. Um, or MinIO, but essentially MinIO um, is a self-hosted storage solution. Um, and the free version is basically command line only. It's fine, it, it works well for me, but um, that being said, it does require super low latency access to storage. And if you're remembering so far, I've said it's running on the same hardware. So um, you may be wondering, how am I getting lower latency with the same hard drives? but I was actually running Minio in a separate virtual machine using the hard drives through iSCSI over the network. Um, and iSCSI is how a lot of people like network boot their virtual machines or um, even boot servers or whatever off, off of it's really well performing. But um, iSCSI in this case was not working well at all. Um, and having separately attached storage was actually really, really inefficient for what I'm doing. Um, and there's a lot of actually performance impacts on this as well. Let's take a look at the new S3 storage and how we got the new solution to be better than the old one. What did I have to do? So since I moved my S3 storage server back to basically on bare metal now at this point, um, it's actually running on TrueNAS, um, which was the old storage backend anyway. So essentially TrueNAS was making iSCSI share, the virtual machine was mounting it, um, and everything was, I would say, happy there. It really wasn't happy, it wasn't working well. but. Um, it's now running inside of Docker. Sorry, Mini, MinIO is now running inside of Docker. Um, so there is potentially some performance loss because it's not directly bare metal, but Docker is really fast. And we do have a lot of speed gain by mounting the storage directly through that Docker container. So there's no network latency in between any storage operation. It's directly on that server. Um, and actually because of this, I've observed much, much lower latency um, of like 2000 milliseconds per request less than before. So that's two seconds I'm shaving off. Um, and I've seen up to even 10 times the read-write speeds, which is phenomenal. So um, what does this look like from a migration standpoint? How did I get here? Um, let's take a look. So I'm not choosing to migrate my user's data over to the new solution. Um, and there's a couple reasons for this. Let's, let's go over the reasons. So first of all, I've had this philosophy and I want to continue it. I don't want to touch the user's data unless I have to. Um, there's no reason for me to um, even mess around with copying it, whatever. I don't want to be responsible for um, not copying it correctly. Um, now that being said, I do have proper precautions. There are offsite backups. There's all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm not neglecting the data that the users are uploading. I'm taking very good care of it. That was one part of it. Second part was actually that most users barely had any data on the service, uh, because of how slow it was. I think the total combined data across all of the customers, which had terabytes and terabytes of storage allocated to them was only about 60 gigabytes. So it's absolutely nothing um data wise number three it was also a really great chance to actually generate um everyone's access keys again regenerate them um and re-secure the environment so since deploying the original server um i have implemented encryption on the data key storage to the pool um sorry to the on the portal so the keys are encrypted when i upload them to the beam networks cloud portal um so i wanted to make sure these keys were encrypted from the start i believe they were before but i didn't remember entirely so i wanted to ensure that these keys going forward are always going to be encrypted from the get-go. And lastly, number four, I wanted my users to see the performance improvements firsthand um, by them trying out and comparing them side to side. By leaving the old server hooked up and everyone's access key is still valid, they could validate that yes, the old server sucks, the new server is in fact so, so much better. Just to clarify, this is a summarization of a story of that's been months in the making. Um, I've ran MinIO on virtual machine, I've ran it bare metal, I ran um, SMB mounted storage, I've ran NFS mounted storage. I've tried a lot. Um, I really wanted the network storage to work because I felt like that MinIO setup was a little more um, adaptable, like there's more pieces to it, which theoretically could result in a higher failure rates and less availability if something were to go down, but it would allow me to scale it easier in the future. Um, that was kind of the hope with that. 
Um, but now that I'm running it inside of TrueNAS, scalability is not as easy, although it is still entirely possible. Um, I think the easiest way to scale for me is going to be um, setting up another port forward um, for the second server if I ever got one and having separate servers or whatever for these uh, clients and customers. Um, but that is way far down the line. We're not even close to reaching capacity or anything like that. So it's not a huge priority for me whatsoever. That being said, um, if you are a cloud customer, I have granted you guys uh, a month free of storage um, or coupon or I don't know how it works, honestly, but I believe you should have a month free either in the month of September or the month of October should have been free or maybe even November for some customers. All customers eventually will get a one month free discount um, on, their on their storage just because I do feel bad about it and I want to make sure I can do my part to make it right. Um, and I hope that my customers are happy with the overall speed improvements, which are great improvements. All that to say, uh, I want to thank you guys uh, for sticking along with this video. It's kind of more of a story time video, but I hope it helps some people. And I hope that anyone watching this is now interested in the cloud storage. It is really, really good stuff now. I can assure you it is working really well. Um, and yeah, it's backed up offsite. I believe, I know for a fact there's one offsite encrypted backup. Um, I am in the process of configuring a second one. And there's also local snapshots of the data. So if you guys ever need me to pull back some data that you may have deleted, I am able to do that. I cannot guarantee the time frame I'm able to pull that back, but um, I absolutely can. And in the event that a server gets completely bombed and exploded, um, I still have your guys' data stored uh, securely, offsite, encrypted, all the stuff. So great stuff here, guys. Um, if you're interested in the cloud storage, check it out. There's a link down below. Um, Beam Networks Cloud has a portal now. You can sign up, get your services, and I will provision them as fast as I can. Uh, coming soon, we will be doing a service provisioning uh, project where I will have them automatically provision, uh, which is going to be so epic. I'm so excited for that. But until then, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. I will see you all in the next video.